the Tacoma Narrows Bridge in Washington State opened in 1940, it was thought to be lovely and elegant in the new lightweight style, but nothing very groundbreaking. It was a wonderful bridge just to look at. It was beautiful. The spectacular Golden Gate Bridge in San Francisco had opened three years before, with a span almost 2,000 feet longer. On the other coast, New York's George Washington Bridge, built in 1933, was 700 feet longer. But the Tacoma Narrows Bridge would make a lasting name for itself. Within days of its opening, it began to sway like a hammock in the breeze. Pretty soon, it was the most famous bridge in America. We learned that about the, the bridge, that when the wind was up, it would become galloping gurdy, move up and down. And when the wind was really bad, we used to ride our bikes out there, park on a hill beside the bridge, and watch it go up and down, just for a lark. They let people go when the dropping was so sudden that it felt like an old-fashioned elevator. Boom, <laughs> like that. Galloping Gertie remained open to traffic for four months. But in November, everybody was ordered off as a 40-mile-an-hour gale whipped across her deck, lifting the roadway like a sail. We went out to, to watch it whip, and it was really whipping, and there was one car on it. But then it got late, and so we left. By afternoon, the stresses were too much. Incredibly, the 11,000-ton center span ripped away and crashed into the sea. Dynamic problems had never been considered important before. Every bridge ever designed, even the smallest um, arch over a stream, has some aerodynamic lift associated with that span, some aerodynamic characteristics. Well, if the bridge is stone and it's 20 feet long, how important are the aerodynamic forces? They're not. But the Tacoma Narrows Bridge was no stone arch over a stream. The center span was 2,800 feet long. Ironically, the major factor in the spectacular collapse was that bridge designers were getting better. Bridges were now longer, thinner, and lighter. As that trend continued, inevitably, the secondary effect of aerodynamics on a bridge one day became a primary effect. The aerodynamics are always there, but as you get longer and longer and longer, there's just more profile and your bridge is getting less proportionately stiff to length as you're getting longer and longer spans, and all of a sudden, a second-order force becomes a first-order force. After the spectacular collapse of the Tacoma Narrows Bridge, other bridges with similar construction were stiffened, and they remain open to traffic today, almost 60 years later. The Tacoma Narrows Bridge disaster forced engineers from then on to take aerodynamics into consideration when designing bridges.